So in, in its most general terms, um, you, you need to have a negotiation only when there is an incompatibility. If everybody agrees with everything from the outset, there is nothing to negotiate. And um, th 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 there are times when um, people talk about negotiation as if it's negative, as if it's a bad thing, that we have to have an argument before we can work together. Um, but when you think about it, um, people negotiate with each other about everything all the time. Um, two people will negotiate with each other about where they would rather um, go for dinner. Or if you have two cannibals, they negotiate with each other regarding who they'll have for dinner. <laughs> and um, that, that's just the way life is, is that we don't always agree with everything from the outset, and we have to get to the point where um, we're, we're, we're able to um, cooperate and collaborate on something. Um, the stages of negotiation, just in, in, in very general terms, um, where we're going to be talking about what you need to be doing for your due diligence to prepare for a negotiation um, and, 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 and moving from there to how you get to that win-win outcome and implement a particular plan of action for um, making sure that all of the stakeholders at your institution are comfortable with whatever it is that you just settled on. Um, so to, to, to begin with preparation, um, there, 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 there's a question about who you should be consulting. Um, do you want to be getting the PI involved? Sometimes you need to because you need to understand um, what each party is bringing to the relationship and, and the, the best place to get that is from the PI. There are going to be other times when um, you, you may not need the PI specific input, but you, you need to know who the stakeholders are who, who have a vested interest in the outcome of the negotiation so that you're in a position to represent those interests in um, the discussion and to involve them um, in conference calls when that's appropriate, when you think that's going to advance the conversation to the next step as opposed to just bogging it down. Um, do you have any other thing that you wanted to add to that, Craig? Well, um, it does occur to me that at least the, the first four bullet points are uh, it's important to recognize that the, it's an iterative process. So you prepare, you discuss, you clarify goals, you negotiate, then you do it again, usually at least twice before you, you get to the point of having actual agreement on what the terms will can be. And it's, as you prepare for the conversation with your faculty member, it's helpful. It's an opportunity to educate uh, to, and help manage expectations about how this negotiation is actually going to proceed. Yeah, I think a really nice way, way to emphasize that point is to um, look at how um, th th there can be a, a, just a misunderstanding when you're going into that first iteration. And, and you, you can be spending um, a lot of time and, and resources preparing to deal with something that you think is going to be a serious roadblock in your relationship with the other party. And then when you get on the phone with them for the first time, you realize that they've used the wrong template or that um, they, they didn't mean what you thought they meant by that sentence. And they're more than happy to clarify it. And, and, and so what, what, what you thought was going to be a serious issue um, turns out to be not that big an issue at all. But then um, you can go right back to a situation where um, you thought something was going to be minor and that, that, that it was going to be an easy process to get them to make a change. And surprisingly, they refuse to make that change. Um, so so both, both of those things can happen, which is why you have to cycle through those stages multiple times. Mm -hmm.